Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all and welcome to Straight Up with MS and all its crazy little circles here on MS and Me Radio, um, which is brought to you by the MS Global Support Network. I'm your host, Patty Long, and you can find me on Twitter at MS and It for Life, and I spell that M S E N I T, the number four L I F E. Um, and I chose the name because we're all in this thing for life, and um, I just, you know, couldn't spell. So, um, and, and I wanted to put MS in my name, so I became MS in it um, for life. And, uh, uh, you know, each year we have these two big conferences, and Ectrums is the really humongo one that has scientists, doctors, all the researchers, everybody gathered together in one place. Lots of patients too and representatives from various magazines and MSME Media's own Erica Lyons Richardson was there and she's she's doing some great things um, on her show where she's talking about what they've um, found and and what they were talking about at this big conference, and it's really exciting, you know, to to hear the new ideas and to see the new meds and see the stats coming out. Cause you know this is the kind of thing that I used to do. Um, I don't do it anymore. Um, I I I'm not as smart, I guess, as I used to be. Even though I kind of think of myself as smart enough but um you know it these kinds of things are really hard for me so um you know math is just not my thing anymore and uh so I don't do my research but I I understand what I'm looking at um it takes me you know 10 times longer to figure it out sometimes even more than that even after I've looked at it and uh, um but eventually after i look at it enough times i'm like oh and there's that same thing that you used to experience when you were little i'm sure um that we've all experienced it at some point in time that you know usually when we're in school or something that tada moment when something finally it clicks and all of a sudden we get it <coughs> excuse me I have got a freaking cold I haven't had a cold in a long time so I'm very fortunate but I have a cough cold thing that was brought to me thank you very much it was brought to me by my dear grandchild Nathan who has come to visit this week he came down last week um, at the end of the week. Um, I think it was Thursday when they finally got here. But they came down to visit and we had his birthday party. He just turned five and his little sister is still three. And um, his mom and dad are here staying with me as well. And their dog Titus, who is a Siberian Husky, so I have a, a different dog hanging out with me today um, out here on the porch because Hachi was kind of tired, so I put him in the house. But in any case, um, I did catch his cold thingy that he had, um, and that's kind of a, a newish thing for me, so I'm going to need to go back and check those blood tests and check my white blood cell counts and all the little different pieces of them and see if they're changing in any way because it's really important for us to stay on top of our own labs but back to ectrums 
You know, I'm really excited about some of the things that are coming out. Um, I butylist, or I butylast, I should say. It's a new drug. It's not been approved yet. But it's, or at least I don't think it has. I could be wrong because I don't always have these facts 100% right as far as which ones have been um, um, made available to everybody. Uh, especially since each country has their own way of, of doing things. But Ibutilast is slowing the brain atrophy in patients with progressive MS by 48%. And um, that's amazing. I mean, to be able to slow that brain atrophy, that's huge. And if it's doing that, in progressive MS, you know, I'm sure that soon they'll have ways of doing that for all of MS. And now you might hear my grandson in the background and his doggy came running up to him. Um, but that's exciting. And uh, this one I have no idea how to say. Siponim, siponimod, sup, sup. Sipen, sipenimod. I'm not sure. S i p o n i m o d is one that's coming out for secondary primary, secondary primary, secondary progressive MS. And you know, up to now we have had no drugs for secondary progressive. And um, this one has been had all its applications sent in. Um, to all the various different places and so now we're just waiting on approval for it and it's an oral medication and the studies are showing that it slows progression so that's really exciting too not only to have a DMT for this but to have proof that it's actually slowing progression significantly and um, and then there's Ocrevus. And Ocrevus is one that's already on the market for many of us. That's for primary progressive. And it's for relapsing, remitting both. And it's still proving to be both safe and effective. Um, it's, you know, it's like any of our DMTs. You have to watch those blood tests and make sure that everything's going good with your blood tests. And that's an indication. If your blood tests start messing up, that's an indication that maybe it's time to switch um, types of therapies you're on. Um, but it's, it's, it's holding true to what they already knew. And it lessens brain atrophy as well. So brain atrophy has been a huge topic for this year's conference. And it, it's also, you know, lessening the lesion load from what I understood in people with primary progressive MS and relapsing remitting MS. And so this is, this is really exciting. Now, here's something I didn't know. So, I'm going to throw it out there because maybe you guys didn't know it. Did you know that you can still have relapses during secondary progressive MS? Because I didn't, you know. I mean, and they, the doctors right now are saying, the consensus is, to treat it like you would treat relapsing remitting MS, even though it's not relapsing remitting. Treat those relapses. And you want to do this because your DMT will stop the relapses. And when you stop the relapses, it will slow the progression of the disease. And and this is why I'm so pro-DMT, because they're doing their job, y'all. They're, 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 they're not for, necessarily, I should say, they're not necessarily for right this second. You know, if you're doing well and you've been diagnosed with relapsing remitting, you might think, well, I don't need to take a DMT. But that DMT is going to protect you from all that stuff happening in the background that you don't know is going on. You're not having funky symptoms, so you don't know what's going on. So it protects your future. 
So, you know, I encourage you to take one. So it didn't surprise me that they they have come to that um, knowledge <coughs> and understanding, you know. <coughs> Excuse me again. And here's another one of those little facts that I probably should have known, and it's another duh moment, but I didn't know. I've never seen it proven. But now there's a proven paper saying that this is what happens. But did you know that a greater cortex lesion load is an indicator that you're at a higher risk of developing secondary progressive MS? Now, I did not know that, but it makes sense, you know, if you are worse off because of a huge lesion load or a considerable amount of brain atrophy, then you probably are at a bigger risk for getting secondary progressive. It just makes sense. But now they've proven it. Um, and there's um, Ozanamod which shows it's a new drug that's also going to be an oral drug, and it's showing that it's reducing MRI lesions in both early and more advanced MS cases, and it's speeding up patients' processing speed. Now, this one is certainly of interest to me because for me, being able to process information and think quicker and remember things, again, the way I once was, or even close to the way I once was, you know, even if it's just, you know, a 5% greater ability, I would gladly take that. So it really interests me, but it's, it's speeding up people's thinking speed. And if it's speeding up your thinking speed, then I would think that that would also translate to speeding up everything about you. But I'm not sure because your motor pathways and your thinking pathways, while they join, they're not the exact same. So that that's something that time will tell as they study it more and more. And it's it's just so exciting to hear all this great stuff, you know, and I've got friends on Acrevis who have done a lot better, and the way Acrevis works, it seems to have a bigger effect after the second or third dose, and then it kind of tapers off, and it doesn't seem like it's having as big of an effect, but over time, it, it really does have a big effect. And that was part of the study that was announced, was that this over time, um, how much it did for you. And, um, you know, the fact that that one also lessens brain atrophy, and it's already on the market, it, it's one that I'm also interested in. So, you know, Here's me a couple of, of things to think about and to talk to my doctor about that I've learned from this conference. So it's really amazing. And I want to thank everybody who has ever participated in a medical research study, whether it's for MS or for some other purpose, whether it's a medication or, a, or some other type of therapy, like, um, like they would have for physical therapy and um, for dietary therapies and all of these things. I think these are very interesting. And I want to thank all these people who have done this. They're still saying that a Mediterranean, I can say the word, a Mediterranean type of a diet, if you can handle one, because we're all different, so some of us have different dietary needs in general. So, you know, but if you, that, that diet itself seems to be better for people with MS. Now, they're saying seems to be, and there's a lot of those seems to be when it comes to diets. There's no proof. And I still believe that when it comes to your diet, you should 
listen to yourself, you know, okay, I ate this um, cake, and I got all wishy-headed, okay, maybe it was too much sugar, so maybe that's what it was, but maybe you shouldn't have something quite so sweet, <coughs> and, sh and that's just the first one that came to mind, um, and then there's, like, stuff that you eat, and then you get heartburn really bad, you know, if you're going to get heartburn really bad, then maybe you shouldn't eat it. You know, let's, let's be smart about this and pay attention and say, oh gosh, I'm not going to eat any more onions or I'm not going to eat any more peppers or I'm not going to eat any more of this or that because it's making me sick. And for me, um, eating things that had a lot of fat content or high fat content, um, just made me very nauseated or it, it made me outright puke especially waking up in the morning and eating later in the evening and waking up in the morning the first thing I would do was sit up in bed and everything left over in my stomach came right up so I don't eat anything that's super fatty like that you know I keep my fat content down and then there's you know obviously I already mentioned the sugar and diabetes um, or it's opposite um, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, any one of those, you, you don't want to eat a lot of sugar. So, you know, these kinds of things make a big difference. And then there's people who have allergies, which I have allergies as well. I have allergies to nuts, which everybody says are so healthy, but I can't eat them. I'd be sick as a dog. You'd probably have to take me to the hospital. And then there's and coconuts the same way. Um, and coconut oil is like the oil that is being put in everything. I have to read the labels on everything because it's not even on the allergy, you know, warning list, you know, like tree nuts are. So I have to be really careful about the coconut oils. Um, and I have to look for that warning for tree nut allergies. But I also have allergies to shellfish. And shellfish, um, you know, they're pretty easy to stay away from. You know you have this really bad reaction, so you don't eat them. You know, and um, so each of us, while we can look at the Mediterranean diet and say, huh, this sounds good and this sounds good and ooh, that would make me sick, we can maybe make some adjustments and, and make our own diet based on how we each respond to the food we eat and I also want to thank the people who have donated their brains their spinal cords their entire body their muscles every bit of themselves to research and science because without them the doctors and researchers wouldn't have um, an, the ability to cut bl brain slices out and find differences because you're not going to cut into your brain and take a slice of it out or a part of your spine and take a slice of it out and see what it looks like while you're still alive. So donating yourself to this is huge because then they can find the differences and why m this medicine didn't work for this patient and why it did for this other person because they're their MS is different and they can see those tiny differences in those MS patients by people donating themselves after their death and by doing this by doing this they actually discovered a new type of MS a brand new fifth type of MS and it's called let me hope I don't mess this up. It's called myo myocortical MS, and its abbreviation is MCMS. And this is a subtype of MS, and um, it's it's characterized differently. And they know it's characterized differently because they were able 
to look at the brains of people who had something different about them and then look at the brains of other people with MS and say, whoa, this is different in all these cases. And so, you know, there's no cure for any of us. But the, the, the researchers who made this discovery are from the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. And they were at this conference. And so they, they um, divulged it, I guess, at the concert conference or or else talked about it but that's when I heard about it but it's characterized this MCMS is characterized by death of the brain's nerve cells but without any damage to the protective coatings of the neurons which is the traditional hallmark type of MS you know it's it and yes I quoted that from um, that little sentence um, who is this uh, Medical News Today is whose write-up I'm actually looking at at the moment. But, um, you know, normally... <coughs> there's that cough again. Sorry, guys. <coughs> but our MS usually is the myelin breaking down and the demyelate, demyelination, um, which leads to the death of of these neurons in MS and and causes the disability that they say is irreversible. Now I'm not so certain that I believe it's irreversible because I believe there's a lot that a person can do. Now I know that everybody can't overcome everything. If they could I'd be back to work by now. But at the same time I don't think we have to sit there and believe in the crystal ball that says that you know, life is going to be bad and we're going to get worse and worse and worse and worse because I was told that I was given a very bleak future. Um, and, you know, I changed that. And so I do think that with these new treatments and with the physical therapy, which I talk about all the time, you know, and the new understanding of, of how this works, um, you know, it, it, I think it's all makes an impact for all of us, regardless of which kind we have, including if we have this new kind that they have found. Um, and you can see it on their MRIs that it's different. And, um, you know, it was only by examining the people after their brains, after they passed away, that the MS researchers were were able to find this new subtype. And they did find that the myelin loss um, that would have been on the MRI, you know, the white spots, were actually signs of neuronal swell... Neur neuronal swelling I can say that and um, that this was just different and it's really cool and I think they're gonna find more and more of these subtypes ones that are completely different from what they now know and I'm sure they know that they're gonna find more because um, birdie birdies singing to me there um, <laughs> but that I think they're gonna find more and more as more and more people um, do donate their bodies to science after they've passed away I know I plan to do that um, I hope my family understands and I also know that a lot of times what they do is they get their slices that they need and they, you know, it just, it holds up a funeral, but it doesn't mean you can't have one. So that's, that's what I want to do. Um, because we don't all have the same disease and this is how they will find these differences. And this is how they will figure out why did, um, Interferon beta-1A not work at all for this patient.
when it works decently well for these. Why did this patient get to secondary progressive and this patient not? Now, right now, everybody's leaning towards lesion load um, and number of relapses, which I kind of agree with. But there's no real absolute proof yet. So that is the general consensus, though. And why is it that some people respond very well to an oral therapy and others need an IV therapy? And why do some respond to steroids like solumedrol and others don't? And maybe it's not just about whether or not you can tolerate the IV steroids because um, there are, and I, can't, I wish I could remember them, but there are several other names of drugs that I, could, I should know but can't think of right now. But you can look them up. And, uh, um, you know, the, you don't have to have solumedrol. So if it doesn't work for you, then try a different one. But with all of... All of the donations that people make when they donate their brains and their spines and their bodies to science like this, um, that's how they figure out a lot of this stuff because nobody wants to be cut in two while they're alive. Trust me, I've had my brain cut in two once and I don't want to do it again. Once was enough, you know? And they had to go in there and cut out this tumor. But they weren't taking healthy brain slices, which is, well, what I'm considering healthy. They were taking out the brain tumor slices. And they sliced that up. But they didn't take out other tissue and other parts of my brain and check it to see what's going on. Because um, you just don't do that in a living person. So, anyways... My time is up. Um, go to msmemedia.com and you'll see um, that Erica Lyons Richardson has done a couple of broadcasts and has also done um, a couple of papers, I think, now on what she learned while she was there at Ectrums. <coughs> So, before I cough my head off, um, let me say goodbye, and thank you for listening and tuning in. Um, Y'all make it worth doing, and I wouldn't be here without you. Um, I love you all. Now, remember, this week, smile big, smile often, laugh a lot, and most importantly, love yourself. Bye.